What's up guys? It is January 21st, 2015, and I'm here at Dr. Johnson's office. I got the call from him that my blood work results finally came in. So here we are about two weeks post gluten-free fat to fit journey, and I uh, wanted to see where my blood work was compared to my baselines and compared to my midway point after eating two months of gluten-free but the unhealthy way. So we're gonna compare uh, my final results to those two first tests uh, with Dr. Johnson right now. So let's go in and hopefully uh, I got back to where I was when I started this journey. Real quick too. Um, Take a look at trig triglyceride before we turn over. Yeah. And you'll see here that we were at 58 and 89 and now we're down to 48. Oh wow. And triglycerides okay. again is a form of fat uh -huh. It's a storage form, so storage our body form. will take sugar when it's, you know, the liver's trying to metabolize a lot of the sugars and fructoses, it, it changes it into a triglyceride to store it. So very common in the world of a heavier carb diet of refined carbs, yeah. we see triglycerides elevated. Okay. So yours, I mean, still at 89, we're like, nice. <laughs> but that's because you started at 58, which is ex pretty impressive. Yeah. But now, here you are dropping back down into 48. So 48. those are areas that can change quickly. IGF-1. Um, yeah, yeah, which is a great marker for Interesting. wellness, growth hormone production. Um, you know, uh, so for that baseline to be elevated for your age, because this is an age-related range, uh -huh. 254, awesome initially. Yep, dropped And down. then yeah. dropped very significantly, <laughs> and now is back up due to a cleaner lifestyle. Yeah, even higher, 264. All the science kind of points that the higher you can maintain that, yes, the healthier, yep. the slower the aging process. Cool. So that that's fairly compelling. And even your testosterone, uh, it kind of interesting, right? Oh I mean, yeah, wow. Went from you know 600 or 599. Baseline dropped. Oh, right, no. Dropped down to 376, and now it's back up into the 500s. You know, if we look at the size of your particles, so initially at baseline, less than 90 is shy of amazing, you know, at the baseline level. The very okay. first labs we drew. So that, that to me is remarkable. When we, see, I rarely see it that low. Okay. So that's clean eating. Yeah. So then, in the world of <laughs> not healthy gluten free, <laughs> yeah. 313 is a very big jump in the world of small uh, particles. Okay. That is statistically significant, and and you know in the in the November blood draw. Okay. I see and then you go doing. back to cleaning it up, and now you're dropping back down to where you were with baseline. Okay. Okay, my okay. HDL-C, just so we go over that too, went from 63 down to 60, back up to 73. Yeah, which my is My good awesome. cholesterol. Yeah. Okay, which is that's awesome. good one that I wanted to show too. That's yeah, interesting. Very good. And again, that very much influenced by lifestyle. Yep. Interesting. So insulin resistance is a huge contributor to your number one killer in the United States, right? Yeah. So to, to go from less than 25, which is phenomenal, mm -hmm. to 54 <laughs> in 60 days. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy. That's yeah, pretty scary, that, actually. That's, that's pretty scary. You increased your risk of a heart attack fourfold that's really by scary. making lousy choices, right? Yeah. But lousy choices, <clears throat> I mean, in my opinion, oftentimes that are marketed to us as good choices. Yep. So, and then you dropped it back down by cleaning it up. So these are things that change, that are the cute changes that you can see quickly yeah. within two months. I mean, yeah. that's phenomenal. The next test is our hemoglobin A1C, which is another marker to help us understand insulin trends and blood sugar trends, right? Yeah. So I think baseline was 5.2, if I remember correctly. This test is really only accurate every, um, you know, three to four months-ish. So to be checking it every two months gives yeah. us information, but we have to interpret it. Yeah, so it's on the page five of eight of the first blood okay. draw. Five of eight. And there it is at 5.2. It went up to 5.3 just in 60 days. And now back, and, and in my opinion, this is a percentile. Okay. So 0.1, in my opinion, is significant. Okay. 
Okay, I, yeah. I, some people are like, well, that's not a very big change. No, that <laughs> actually is because it's showing that your average blood sugar is trending back into a better range than it was when you were eating a lot of refined. Foods. Okay. Okay. And that's in it. Yeah, that's a risk for diabetes, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. Good point. Control. And then on the next page is our vitamin D vitamin levels. D. Um, the uh, to have that at 83 on this blood test, we love that level. That's okay. an optimal level. Almost of, back up to where it was, but it went down from 97.1 yeah. baseline, 38.4, back up to 83.7. Okay. Vitamin D, as we know, a phenomenal vitamin that protects our bodies from 16 different types of cancers. Cool. Very important in bone health. Helps our metabolism, brain function. I mean, the list goes on. Okay. Immune system function. So. To have optimal levels is extremely important. All right, so we just got done going over the blood work results with Dr. Johnson. Um, a lot of surprises, uh, actually, and I actually learned a lot because um, one thing that um, I looked at before was sometimes these results you think are going to be very black and white, you know? Healthy, good results. Unhealthy, bad results. Healthy again, hopefully good results. But that's not always the case. Some things in your body aren't as resilient as other things, and um, you know some things lagged and didn't show up the way I wanted them to, even though I ate healthy for two months. Um, and uh, but some things went back to normal, which is great. And um, the good thing to remember is that um, you know this has to be a lifestyle change. Uh, two months of living unhealthy, I saw some really bad results, but I saw some ones that didn't really change a whole lot, right? Two months of living healthy again, gluten-free, um, some things went back to normal and some things didn't. Some things trended in the wrong direction. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, the body's, you know, a lot more mysterious than we think and it wasn't as black and white as I thought it was going to be. But this needs to be a lesson for all of us to continue to live a healthy lifestyle no matter what, right? Don't just do a 60-day healthy uh, lifestyle change and then go back to eating junk food again. Um, the, the key is to make it a lifestyle change so that your body, the things that do lag behind and don't change as quickly, will eventually go back to normal. So I'm not too worried about anything. It's not like I'm dying or have type 2 diabetes or anything serious. Um, a lot of the things that were more serious did go, did go back to normal, which is great. And I plan on continuing to live this way and hopefully you will too. And Hopefully from this gluten-free fat to fit journey, we all learned some very valuable lessons, which I will talk about in a separate video. Um, but hopefully we all learned some lessons from this and can continue to live uh, this healthy lifestyle.